When in God's name are we going to stand up to the gun lobby? When in God's name are we do what we all know in our gut needs to be done? A nation in shock after yet another deadly shooting at an elementary school. But will something change after all? Hello, I'm Nathan King, sitting in for Hannah Naidu, and this is The Heat. In a country with more civilian guns than people, it's happened once again. 19 children and two adults killed by a gunman inside an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas. Something that this country, the United States, is only getting too familiar with. Tony Waterman has this story from Texas. We just uh, had a press conference uh, with the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, also Senator Ted Cruz uh, was there, and we got some very chilling details about this shooting. According to Abbott, uh, the school was intentionally targeted. The alleged gunman posting on Facebook just 30 minutes before that he was going to shoot his grandmother. 15 minutes later, another posting saying that he shot his grandmother and then saying that he was going to shoot an elementary school. So this appears to be, at this point, an intentional targeting of the Robb Elementary School. Abbott also saying that this gunman shot his grandmother in the face. She is uh, right now clinging to life at a hospital in San Antonio and uh, obviously suffering a lot of injuries, but she could potentially be, if she can pull through this, a key witness to what exactly happened here. How did this tragedy kick off uh, 24 hours ago? We also learned in this press conference that there are 17 people who were injured in this uh, shooting spree. None of those injuries, though, appear to be life-threatening. Three officers also injured in the attack. Of course, they engaged with this shooting suspect at the scene. Uh, when they arrived, he was wearing uh, army. Uh, he was wearing armor when he was confronted. Of course, barricading himself into that uh, classroom. Also, learning that he purchased the two rifles that he had just last week, just days after his 18th birthday, also purchasing uh, 375 rounds of ammunition. Take a listen to what the governor, Greg Abbott, had to say. Evil swept across Uvalde yesterday. Anyone who shoots his grandmother in the face has to have evil in his heart. But it is far more evil for someone to gun down little kids. It is intolerable. And just moments before Governor Abbott took to that stage to give uh, some remarks, he was actually interrupted by Beto O'Rourke, his Democratic challenger in the upcoming gubernatorial race. Uh, Beto O'Rourke saying that Greg Abbott uh, was doing nothing when it came to guns and that this incident was, quote, predictable because of his inaction, especially after that 2019 shooting that took place at an El Paso Walmart, Walmart that left uh, 23 uh, people dead. He said that this is on you until you choose to do something. The uh, governor also pinned this shooting really on mental health. He said that's what law enforcement in the area has, has, to has told him, that the real reason behind this uh, incident was because this gentleman was suffering from mental health. He was a dropout uh, from school as well, we learned today. But that uh, this is really where they're trying to pin the blame instead of on lax gun laws uh, here in Texas. To discuss what or if anything will change in the United States after this terrible massacre, let's bring in our panelists with us from Washington, D.C. is Michelle Gray. She, okay, she is the mother of a victim of Sandy Hook. Her, her daughter, Josephine Grace, was taken in the tragedy in 2012. She's also founder of Safe and Sound Schools. Also here in Washington, D.C., Douglas Sloan, principal of the National Capital Strategy Group. Alan Singer, Director of Secondary Education Social Studies at Hofstra University. He joins us from New York. And from Wilmington, Delaware, Brandon Bryce is a Republican strategist. Welcome to you all on this really tragic day. Um, 
Michelle, obviously, I want to start with you. Uh, you know, my first thoughts when I heard about this was um, what you guys went through, having to wait in that firehouse next to the school uh, nearly 10 years ago um, for the news you, you got. I mean, what went through your mind today? It just feels like we are reliving it. Um, we are watching this, the, this community and these families go through each of the emotions, each of the, um, each of the steps, uh, the painful minutes, and, and all of that waiting, it's all too familiar. I'm going to follow up because um, you remember four days after, I think it was, uh, then President Barack Obama came for the vigil, December 18th, I think. Can we, can we play his clip? Because uh, if it was never again then, then when is it now? Let's just play this. Oh, hang on a minute. It's just uh, rolling up now. Yeah, here we go. If there is a step we can take that will save even one child from what happened in Newtown, we should take that step. Well, Michelle, those steps have not been taken. And, you know, after your grief and anger and obvious empathy with the parents there, are you, uh, you must be looking back and just saying what is not happening and, and how should it happen? You know, I think we knew in that moment um, that the, although those words were well-intentioned and there was, was, you know, great meaning and, and um, passion behind them, that uh, our attention and our focus uh, needed to be elsewhere. And so we set forth on, on a different path, um, knowing that those conversations and that work uh, would continue, we focused um, in founding Safe and Sound Schools on the practical things that communities can do today. Uh, while all of those conversations continue and all of that work continues around guns and gun legislation, uh, we are very squarely focused on what schools and school communities can do to serve kids who are in crisis mm. to address health needs, health and wellness needs, and safety and security needs of the school and the campus to prevent this type of violence, as well as numerous other types of crises that, that schools face every day. Well, Michelle, your services are obviously in high demand again, uh, unfortunately. It's almost like you don't want your group to exist because that would mean there wasn't a problem. Uh, let's, let's bring in Douglas Sloan because I want to play forward wide nine and a half years. The current president on his way back from Asia gave a speech, literally as he touched down, and it's very similar to what we just heard from Barack Obama. Let's take a listen. The idea that an 18-year-old kid can walk into a gun store and buy two assault weapons is just wrong. What in God's name do you need a solvent for except to kill someone? Deer aren't running through the forest with Kevlar vests on, for God's sake. It's just sick. So, what do you think? I mean, are we going to get an assault weapons ban that lapsed after 10 years? I think Joe Biden then has sent to help usher it through, right? Uh, one can only hope. Uh, we had an assault weapons ban back in 1994 uh, when Bill Clinton was in office, and unfortunately, uh, it had a sunset provision on it. And in 2004, George Bush and the Republican Congress let it lapse. And now we find out where we are today. Uh, many of these mass shootings that have happened over the last 20, 25 years have happened with AR-15 assault rifles. Mm. And it's insane that we still have to deal with this level of violence within our society. Uh, Joe Biden is right. You know, deer are not running through the forest with Kevlar vest on. This is not something that uh, normal, rational human beings actually need. Uh, you know, people are, we're not saying Democrats uh, and Joe Biden aren't saying that we need to eradicate all guns. But for God's sakes, uh, an assault rifle, uh, extended uh, magazines, unlimited ammunition is unnecessary for rational human beings living in a civilized society. It's just something we don't need, and I do not believe that it's something that our forefathers that authored the Second Amendment ever anticipated. Yes, well-regulated re militia. Um, I, I seem to remember the phrase being. Let me bring in um, Brandon Bryce, uh, the Republican strategist on that. But before that, I think we have a clip of uh, Senator Ted Cruz, obviously from Texas. Uh, and immediately sort of points to this really disappointing, from an outsider's point of view, division when it comes to this debate. Um, let's play it, and I, I want to get your reaction off the back. 
You see politicians try to politicize it. Uh, you see Democrats and a lot of folks in the media whose immediate solution is to try to restrict uh, the constitutional rights of law-abiding citizens. That doesn't work. It's not effective. It doesn't prevent crime. Brandon Bryce is doing nothing effective as well. You know, this is so sad in a day where, you know, the first thing is we already have laws on the books. We need to enforce them. What laws? You know, what laws what specifically? Are you going to be talking about mental health here? But, no, 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 but, you know, before I even get to mental health, let's mm. talk about the fact that... What right about now, guns? We talk about, about guns. Family. Yeah. Right now, hold on. Right now, this is about the families. And the fact that you would have Ted Cruz and even Beto even instill some of their pol politics at a time like this tells you the division in this country. So, so the thing is, Brandon, a lot of people, a lot of people think um, doing nothing is essentially the Republican policy. Thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers. Let's let this calm down, point at, uh, at the dead gunman and say there was obviously some mental health issues and move on and don't talk about taking AR-15s off the market for 18-year-olds. Well, the, the reality is this. The fact, I mean, let's use common sense here. The fact well, that I'm that trying to be logical. Went in and, oh, hold, on, hold on. The fact that an 18-year-old went into a store and got 360 rounds, that should have been a, 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 that should have had a store clerk or somebody say, hey, I've got to report this guy. So, so your, your the, problem was with the ammo, the not the weapons? I mean, uh, an 18, I'm sorry, just an outsider's point of view. I remember, I think it was 26 years ago, I was a young journalist in London, and there was a school massacre in Dunblane, Scotland. Right. Overnight, literally, guns were banned across Britain. You know how many school shootings there's been since then? Zero. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying, from a, point, from a logical point of view, it's not necessarily the ammo, it might be the guns, sir. You refuse to address the real issue that if you lay a gun down, the reality is guns don't kill people. And I hate to say this, well, they do. mentally just... in unstable people kill people. And by the way, the guy that took out the gunman, thank God there was a responsible guy with a gun. Here's the reality. This is Yes, awful. but, 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 but sir, 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 we have a mental health crisis I, I, in the country. We refuse to sure. address it. I was just hoping for a bit more than the regular talking points that we've heard since Sandy Hook, essentially. Uh, so is there anything new you've got to say, do you think? Go ahead. Anything new? Any, you know, Republicans going to say, look, this is too far. Maybe, maybe Governor Abbott's laws in Texas or federally, we should, we should put the assault weapons ban back in. It, it, it did lead to a decline in mass sh uh, shooting deaths. The reality is we need to get stricter on who actually has access to these guns, which, again, I know you guys like to say that mental health doesn't matter. We're not, but no, no, it does matter. It's... Most normal people, hold on, most, most normal people don't go in and first of all, take out their grandmother, or second of all, take out a bunch of school kids. That, that's not normal. That's a mental health issue, and until we address that issue, it won't stop. Um, can I speak to Alan Singer? Sorry, you've been very patient, sir. Um, obviously, you have a lot of um, experience uh, with, with schooling. A lot of uh, people, when these sorts of things happen, say the solution would be to um, arm teachers, have more armed guards, more metal <coughs> detectors. Um, I've even seen commercials today on the internet for bulletproof backpacks. You know, this came up last time. I mean, what are re the real solutions here? Well, first of all, those, that proposal about arming teachers is insane, because right. then what you'll have is shootouts in classrooms with children in the middle. You know, this is about murder. And the Republican Party, and you, Mr. Bryce, you are complicitous with the murderer. People with guns kill people. Um, Yes, we need mental health, but um, I seem to remember the Republican Party has tried to destroy public health in the United States in the Affordable Health Act. So for them to claim that the problem is inadequate mental health is just hypocrisy because they have limited the ability of people to get health. Now, that young man, there were a lot of things he needed to get help. Everybody, everybody recognizes that. But if he did not have access to guns and he purchased those guns illegally, and the person who committed the mass murders in Buffalo purchased those AR-type guns legally, they were not able to get those guns because they were banned in the United States from, 2000, from 1994 to 2004, these murders would not have happened. So, Mr. Bryce, this is just hypocrisy. 
Even the arguments okay. about the Second Amendment are way off. Okay. The Second Amendment is very, very specific. What the Second Amendment says is that um, guns, that um, the right of, let me read it, I'll actually read it. A well-regulated <laughs> militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Well, a well-regulated uh, militia was their equivalent of a volunteer police force. We, could, we, could, we now have police, well-regulated militias. I, I, I take need, your point. Sorry, sir. I just want to move on around. a little bit. I want to move on a little bit. We can pick up with the constitutional debate. But I want to bring Michelle back in here. Perhaps okay. she can add some uh, um, sense uh, through her experience. What needs to be done, Michelle? Uh, let's leave the gun... Uh, 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 debate, the, the political debate, and let's just talk to a mum who lost a kid and your sense of what needs to be done. We know what works in our schools and communities. We know that mental health interventions, threat assessment teams, uh, we know that law enforcement working with school leaders, working with parents, working with school psychologists, that multidisciplinary team approach works. We know that reporting systems and tip lines work. We know that multi-tiered systems of support work for kids, um, for identifying kids, for tracking kids throughout their academic, you know, careers to make sure that they have what they need to, to be safe, to be fed, to be, you know, mm -hmm. Healthy and well, all of those things are are so far upstream, and that is where we need to be. Of course, we need to work on teaching and training, preparing folks uh, to to be safe should a crisis uh, happen in their community, and of course, we need to to plan and prepare for recovering a community on a day like today when we failed. But we have got to move much further upstream in, in how we are taking care of the precious people in our school communities. What's wrong with young men in this country? Because we have seen more and more young men do this, and not just with guns, but there's a feeling of alienation uh, amongst a lot of young men, Michelle. I mean, we, mental health is important, you know, as Brandon said, I, I, but I don't want it to overshadow completely the debate about you know, automatic weapons in the hands of an 18-year-old who's just got 18. But what about young men in our society? Because you are seeing a lot of mental anguish and pain. We are seeing a lot of mental anguish and pain, exactly as you said. We are seeing broken families. We are seeing kids that are coming to school food insecure. They're not, their basic needs are not being provided for. And while all that flies under the radar, it can begin to fester. It can turn into bullying issues. It can turn into, you know, social um, maladjustment. It, it can turn into ultimately mental health issues and isolation issues. And, and then in turn, in this day and age, we see those kids that are isolated turning to online communities. Uh, our attacker, for instance, uh, was really only in contact with this uh, nefarious group of, of online mm. um, you know, individuals that were uh, obsessed with mass violence and mass shooting kind of egging each other on. So we just have uh, so much going on. We need to be looking at what what's happening in our kids' lives, be, you know, be aware of what they're doing online, be monitoring, be active in their lives, be supervising. Uh, there are so many things uh, today that our kids have access to that are positively dangerous and uh, that, um, that lead to some of the things that we're talking about this evening. Thank you, Michelle. Douglas, I'm, I'm going to bring you back in. Um, so, uh, we saw Governor Abbott, for example, in Texas, actually allow more access to guns during his watch. Obviously, this is a terrible tragedy. We don't want to point fingers at anyone. But Democrats have been in power for the last few years. Gun uh, legislation has been top of their agenda. If you're not going to break the filibuster in the Senate over 19 dead kids, when are you going to do it? Why is Democrat inaction um, on guns uh, so prevalent as well as what uh, Republican in action, as the Democrats, Democrats would say? Well, we absolutely do need to move forward with raking the filibuster regarding enacting common sense gun legislations. But I, I hear a lot of talk on mental health and the, the Republican strategist pointed mm. it out as well. I just wanted to say that the United States is not an outlier for mental health instability. 
we don't have more people with mental health issues than any other Western civilization or Eastern civilization, for that matter, than Canada, than Brazil. Than, so you're than just Britain, saying it's France, the guns. Italy. We don't, we don't have, exactly. There's no mental health outlier. We have an outlier with mass shootings and gun violence. That is the difference. And it is because we have, in some states, nearly unfettered access to these weapons. And it's quite obvious. Uh, I think you just mentioned the shooting that happened in the UK, uh, the Dunblane. Scotland, Dunblane, yes. 25 years. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And, and what happened after that? The UK took very strict, immediate measures to ban those weapons. And what's the result? You guys don't have any more shoes, school shootings. Same thing happened in Australia, in Port Arthur, about 26 yes. years ago. They en enabled strict gun laws, and then there are no more mass shootings. The United States has to get serious about enacting strict gun, con gun control legislation if we want to see uh, these shootings go away. And that's okay. the bottom line, if we want to eradicate these shootings. Okay. And yes, obviously, Congress needs to be more proactive. Right. We need, I mean, Republicans don't want to hear this, but we absolutely need to end the filibuster on issues like gun control. It's it's okay. just no longer uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm an gonna, issue of us uh, of politics. I get you. Uh, Brandon, sides of the aisle. Brandon, I want to bring you in here, and I'm just going to read you a stat from a report uh, released last week. Uh, it says that gun production in the U.S. almost tripled since the year 2000. Domestic gun production rose from 3.9 million in 2000 to 11.3 million in 2020. More cars, uh, more than cars produced in a year. And of course, sales uh, are continuing to climb. This is obviously evidence that the gun buying is out of control, surely. Well, I mean, the reality is people want to purchase guns and they're entitled to do that. Why? Why? That is it? Why? Why so many? The problem that we're talking about today is the fact that this 18 year old had no business buying 360 rounds to pull this off, and right. somebody should call the police, and they didn't. Well, I mean, there's a lot, uh, you know, uh, as the parent as the parent of a teenager and an eight-year-old kid, I wouldn't let my 18-year-old kid buy a gun. So, I'm, we've got a mental health crisis in this country, and we've got a parenting issue, and we don't want to address the real root of these issues. And until we do that, we're going to continue to so, say, oh, it's the guns, it's the guns. OK, no, Brandon, we've got Brandon, around families. Brandon, why do people want these guns? It's, I mean, you know, one handgun to protect yourself. I, you know, I live in a rural area in Virginia. All my neighbours have guns to protect their farmland and stuff. Uh, you know, uh, they are not, they do not have basements full of AR-15 and 360 rounds, but a lot of people do. Why are Americans buying guns in this quantity? Can you answer that? People, people it's not just, it's not just mentally ill people. It's a lot of people. It could be for hunting. That's, uh, again... No, you don't hunt with an AR-15. No, no self-respecting deer hunter I know would, would, would even uh, uh, think about hunting with an AR-15. One shot, that's what you do. So what are they for except killing people? And you know what? That's, that, that's a tragedy. The reality is, here's the deal. 11.3 million guns. Deserve, hold on, let me, finish, let me finish. At the end of the day, people deserve... People can purchase what they want. Now, if we want to regulate the guns or, or push the laws that are already on the books then that's what we need to do. But until we get serious about this, and listen, I'm not, I'm not against, I'm in agreement that we need to do something. The issue is, however, is that solving the root issue? And why are we still running away from this thing called mental health, which we're seeing every day? Everybody on this panel, everybody on this panel has agreed with you on mental health, but mental health doesn't have a period at the end of it, it has a comma, right? And guns, are a big part of this because that's what kills all the kids. If someone ran in with, say, a knife, it, one or two kids might die, but not 19. You At see what I'm saying? The day, John, all right, hold on, let me, let me state this. At the it's, end it's of the pretty day, logical, I think. Kill people, deranged people with guns kill people, and until we solve that issue, unfortunately, we're going to be in for, for, I hope, not another episode. Well, you know, it's just obviously, you know, uh, as a parent of teenagers, you, you worry all the time. Letting go of my kid's hand this morning, my eight-year-old, was very, very tough. Um, let's, let's talk to Alan. Your reaction to all that? People are not entitled to purchase automatic killing machines. That the Republican Party has stirred up fear all across the United States. The Republican Party and conservatives arguing that white people have to get armed because they're going to be replaced. So here you are stirring up fear and then you say, well, people want to buy guns. 
The other thing that's very, very important is Republican judges have interpreted the Second Amendment incorrectly. The Second Amendment says that people collectively in communities have a right to weapons. It does not say that every individual has a right to a weapon. And we recognize that because there, you can't go out and buy a bazooka. You can't have your own atomic bomb. Well, you shouldn't be able to have an automatic rifle either. And from 1994 to 2004, they were restricted. And if the Republican Party is serious about safety for our children and safety for Americans, mm -hmm. it will stop blocking gun reform legislation. Thank you. I appreciate well, that. Last, last thing. Greg Abbott actually declared Texas a Second Amendment sanctuary state so everybody could have a gun. Yeah. And this is the repercussion of that. Well, well, thank you very much. We've got about 30 seconds left. I just want to ask Michelle um, to give her the last 30 seconds. Is What do you say to the parents who are going through exactly what you went through 10 years ago nearly? Um, we are with them. Yeah. We are we are with them um, and we are there to support them in whatever capacity possible. Um, there are a lot of people that are dedicated to ensuring that something like this doesn't happen. And unfortunately, as you've just witnessed, we are not living in a perfect country or uh, a completely safe world by any means. Um, so there is a lot of work to be done. Yeah. But right now, it's important that we keep the parents Keep the community at the center of our focus, uh, their needs, supporting them. Uh, there will be time for all of us to do this work and, and hopefully learn to do this work together uh, to ensure that our communities are safe and sound. Michelle, everyone else, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, that's all we have, have time for. But we wanted to leave you with a plea from uh, Senator from Connecticut, Chris Murphy, who was asking, what are we doing? Days after a shooter walked into a grocery store to gun down African American patrons, we have another Sandy Hook on our hands. What are we doing? There have been more mass shootings than days in the year. What are we doing? This isn't inevitable. These kids weren't unlucky. This only happens in this country, and nowhere else. Nowhere else do little kids go to school thinking that they might be shot that day. Nowhere else do parents have to talk to their kids, as I have had to do, about why they got locked into a bathroom and told to be quiet for five minutes just in case a bad man entered that building. Nowhere else does that happen except here in the United States of America, and it is a choice. It is our choice to let it continue. What are we doing?